Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sales Velocity TV. We're in episode 20, my friend. We've, we, we're, we're, a, we're a new show. We just hit episode 2020 and uh, excited to share this topic here today. And don't let the, the title fool you, by the way. When we say print, we're not necessarily referring to old school newspapers and magazines, although they can be effective today. We are talking about the concept called salesmanship in print, which really is copywriting and be a, being able to use the written word, Aaron, to persuade and to move people to action and ultimately to make more sales. Using the written word, I feel it is the biggest rock that I see business owners run into time and time again, day in and day out, is not being able to use the written word effectively, not being able to get their message out effectively, and it's just, it's like hitting a wall. Yeah, and, and you know, in our private coaching that we do, you know, the first module that we focus on is basically 100% this. Yeah. And it always is like the hardest module for people to get through, which is like, tell me about you. Tell me about your story. Tell me about your ideal audience. Tell me about their pain points. It, tell me what you're going to solve for them. Tell me what makes you unique and special. And they're like, ah. And more, but, but more important, and tell me about your offer. How is it different? How is it exactly. unique? How do you present it? How do you pitch it? What is your headline, right? That's the key is, and, and we'll talk about this today. The biggest thing of all that I want to start with is what is the hook? And every right. great commercial, every great movie, every great trailer of all time, they have an unbelievable hook that gets attention. And we'll talk about this attention formula in a minute because getting attention today is brutal. It is the hardest thing to do today. So this is really going to be all about how to use the written word. It doesn't matter what media, video, print, TV, online ads, doesn't matter what media is, but how to use the written word in a way that gets attention gets interest and gets people to take action. And there's an old copywriting formula we're going to talk about. And this is key because you're right. It's a sticking point at every corner. Even when we do done for you services, Aaron, right? You talked about the coaching thing. I look at all these done for you, sir. Like we do a lot of done for you um, services within our software company where we're building out sales systems and we're building out processes. And at some point, the million dollar question comes to the client and it is, okay, tell us what you want to say at this part. Tell us what you want to write in your emails over here. What is your web page headline going to say? And it's like, uh-oh, I'm not sure. And that's the deer in headlights moment that keeps business owners stuck more than anything else. It's the copy and getting the wording right. And this isn't, you need to be a, 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 a student of English and you need to be perfect with grammar. It's really not any of that. It's understanding how to use the written word in a way that gets people to take action. There's a difference between traditional writing and marketing writing or direct response writing. Yeah. And, and most, you know, people struggle and we talk about this quite often because they're like, well, I have this product. I just want to tell people about my product and what's in it. And we're like, right to cool. the, the, right to the features there's... of the product, right? Right to the features. Yeah. Right. And we're like, yeah, that that's cool. Like I look at like <laughs> supplement companies as a primary example, right? They're like, I've got the best vitamin. It's organic. It's, it's all natural. It's, it's GMP. It's, it's vegan friendly. It's a, yeah, I don't care. Features, 10, features, 000. features, features, features. There's, there's 10,000 of them, right? How is that going to get my attention? Mm -hmm. You know, because the first part of any great marketing is stealing attention. And I use the word stealing intentionally because this, if, if you don't understand the amount of, of ads, you know, influencers, commercials that people are being bombarded with on a daily basis, you are, are vastly underestimating your competition for attention, right? So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to steal somebody's attention and hold it for at least a few seconds before we start telling them about our magic thing, right? So maybe it's important to talk about the framework, yep. you know, coming out of the gate. Yeah, the big question is how do you do that, right? I don't think anybody disagrees right. that getting attention and keeping, getting and keeping, getting and keeping, right? Getting attention and keeping attention today is without question, should be your number one motivation, your number one goal as a business owner, week in and week out. Forget everything else, operations, your product. I'm sure all that is fine, right? 
If you can't figure out new and different ways to get and keep attention, you won't be around long enough to make enough sales to sustain the business, right? It will, it will become a fast cash flow issue for you. That's how important this is, getting and keeping attention. And it doesn't get easier as more social media comes out, as more platforms get released, as more TV channels get released, as more forms of online media happen. It becomes harder and harder to do it. So this salesmanship in print, this copywriting concept that we're talking about right here is one that as a business owner, you should study deeply. This isn't unfortunately one of those things where you just, I don't know, decide you're going to focus on this stuff and maybe you read a book. Something that needs to be studied is really the study of human psychology and what makes people move, what makes people take action. What are some of the ways to get someone to go from where they are to taking the next step to maybe becoming a lead in your system and ultimately getting on a sales call and ultimately making a sale? What, what are the steps that have to happen? That's salesmanship in print. That's the written word being used correctly along the way to get someone to take the action that you want to get, want to, want to take. And there's an old formula called AIDA, attention, interest, desire, action. If you just remember these four terms, attention, we talked about that, interest, desire, action. It's probably a hundred year old copywriting formula called ADA, yeah. attention, interest, desire, action. I want to break the four down with you today, Aaron. And if you just keep it this simple as a, as a good foundation and you, you build off this and you study more and you go deeper off this, you will be light years ahead of your competition when it comes to getting and keeping attention. Yeah, and it actually ties very well in with the last episode that we did, which was story, you know, telling for maximum profits, right? And, you know, the, you know, I, I live, you know, Andrew, we, you know, we both live in this, this world where we're, we're spending a ton of money on a monthly basis in paid media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, etc. And it, it's never be, been more competitive to get somebody's click or to get somebody to watch a video. And let's just say you, you do the first part, right? You know, so many businesses think it's over at that point. Well, I'll just send them to my order page or I'll just send them to my corporate website yep. or whatever. And you know, they'll buy. Right. And the reality is they will buy. But the problem is, is that the percentage of them that will buy is so low that it's not worth even running paid media. you got to keep this flow, this this AIDA flow all the way through all of your marketing materials, your front end ads, your social media, your website, your follow up email series, your follow up text, so your direct mail. If you're doing direct mail as an additional follow up, you have to keep following this framework because it's the difference between, yeah, I saw a thing or, oh, this looks really interesting. Let me dive in deeper. And if you think about what you just said, there's really three components of that today, right? If you think about traditional advertising, let's say you run a Facebook ad, right? There is, I guess, point number one, right? Where that's the place you get attention, right? The whole goal, of, obviously, of a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad or a YouTube video ad is to get attention, right? right. The next Grab piece of that quickly. is how do you create enough interest to then get them to click through to get to your website, your landing page, your webinar page, your funnel, step two. Right? How do you then create enough desire at that point to get them to take the action, which would be to become a lead, call in, schedule a demo, buy something, buy something or schedule time with you or your advisor or your sales team, right? There's a couple, you know, there's, there's essentially three little pivot points, three little pillars right there. Getting the attention at the ad, keeping the interest so that they take the next step and take the action that you want them to take to do the thing you want them to do so that ultimately you can be making more sales presentations to the right people. That, and if you look at it that way, you look at, it's almost like there's three different components of your sales process, right? There's the ad, there's the web page that they're going to land on to stay interested. And then there's the action that they're going to take, which is getting them to whatever process you're in. Most people look at just the ad. We see this all the time. I just want, I just need a great ad. I just need a great ad. I just need a great ad. Yep. True. Partly true. But you also need a great place for them to land. You need to say the right things there. So that they ultimately get to your webinar, your discovery call, your strategy session, your demo session. Otherwise, you're dead in the water if you can't connect those dots. I, I agreed 100%. And you got to have that consistency of messaging across and you got to keep having that framework continue across. I mean, if you look at, you know, one of the one of the key variables, especially in digital marketing is bounce rate. Yep. Right. What's the bounce rate? How many people leave the site? in the first three seconds, 
right? You can have the best ad in the world and all of a sudden if the person comes to the site and it doesn't align with what you were talking about, it doesn't grab their attention again, then they bounce. Mm -hmm. And if everybody's bouncing, what do you think is happening to your, your cost per acquisition numbers? What do you think is happening to your conversion numbers, right? They're going in the toilet. So you got to keep your entire process following this framework and keep it consistent across every piece where you have to understand your, the currency is attention now, right? It, it, it used to be like currency was sales, but currency now is attention. The more attention you can get and you can keep, right? The most, the more successful you're going to be as a business. Yep. And so it continues on, right? It's, it's the ad, it's the offer, it's getting them in. It's actually getting them to do something with your product. It's keeping their attention after the fact so that they come back and they buy more, right? Or they buy something else, right? How do we keep the attention of our prospect, of our customer over a long enough timeline where all of a sudden, you know, the costs of media become negligible? A couple ways to do it. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, the number one place you want to start with is your audience, right? Who am I marketing to? Who am I for? What is my niche audience, right? If you don't know who that is, it's really difficult to get the attention of a general broad audience. It's a lot easier to get the attention of an audience that's defined. I mean, that's you know, number one, right? Marketing 101 is if I can carve out a niche that makes sense, maybe it's the niche that I'm in, maybe it's a niche that I have intimate knowledge of, maybe it's a niche that I'm in because I've solved the problem and I've overcame something in that, you know, in that regard and I can really show people how to do the same thing, right? That's usually how you end up in a niche, right? There's an, there's an affinity there somehow to the niche. So when you have a niche and you know who you're talking to, it becomes a whole heck of a lot easier to create a message for that niche. And that's when you go to phase two, which is creating that hook or that message. It's a unique selling proposition. You've probably heard the term USP. What is my unique selling proposition? What makes me different? Well, probably not a whole lot if you're speaking to everybody. And we see this quite a bit with newer, newer business owners. They're like, but, 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 Andrew, but, 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 Aaron, my product can help everybody. And we're like, that's great. I'm sure it can, but if it's not for somebody, it's going to be really not for anybody. And that has to be yeah, the first staple it, that gets, that gets handled is the who. Yeah. I used to see it all the time in the e-commerce world, right? Is, is, you know, you talk about like seasonality, for example, yep. right? How many people do you think are buying weight loss during the two weeks around Thanksgiving in the United States? <laughs> I, I can tell you the answer. It's zero, right? Yeah, so low, you don't yeah. want to be trying to sell weight loss you know, essentially from mid October till about January 17th, yep. because it's going to tank. Nobody wants it, right? You don't want to be selling bathing suits. It doesn't matter how good your bathing suit is. Oh, it's made of recycled plastic from the oceans. And we give $10 away to every person who, you know, to charity every time somebody buys one and blah, 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 blah. And you're marketing bathing suits to people in Jersey in November because they ain't buying total them. disconnect. And that happens total quite a bit. Disconnect. That happens quite a bit. This is what creates the disconnect. Right. The wrong right. message at the wrong time to the wrong audience. There, there's your formula for not having success. Right. Right. You know, and, and when you get really, really clear on who your market is, what their pain points are, what their desires are, how you're going to be able to bridge them from the pain to the, you know, to the pleasure. Right. Then you can accurately craft a message. Yep that's going to speak to them and hold their attention. Right. And that's, you know, that's the key. Yeah. And the messaging piece takes a little bit of work. So when you, research. when you have the who and you know who you're for, this now becomes a situation where you need to craft some messaging that gets their attention. Now, one great formula I want to give is the good old fashioned how to without formula. You know this, right? right. How to do something, right. Overcome something, make more money, lose more weight, how to do something without fill in the blank. This is, this is probably the, 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 the simplest, most proven starting point, how to fill in the blank without fill in the blank, how to do something without it. I don't know, costing your life without it, you know, making right. you work more hours, how to, right? How to create maximum pleasure without having to be inundated with maximum pain. Right. So, so here's an example in the weight loss space, right? Biggest market in the world by far, and it just continues to recycle. How to lose 10 pounds in 30 days without changing anything you eat, as an example, right? Something Absolutely. like that, again, off the top of my head. But if you can just start there with the messaging, 
because A, you know who the audience is, and now you have a thing that can show them how to do something, I hope. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all selling how to do something better, how to shed something, how to gain something. Really, what we're selling at the end of the day with our product and service is how to avoid pain or how to gain pleasure. So your how-to right. should be you, pretty I'll easy. Give, I'll give you another great example. You know, we had this client, you and I, last year called iVisa, right? And when they came to us, I was like, what's the, you know, what's the hook? Yeah, what's the... Right? And they said, well, we help people get travel visas to international companies without having to go through the government bureaucracy and paperwork Beautiful. of these completely disorganized, slow, you know, government agencies in different countries. So I said, so let me get this straight. If I want to get a travel visa to say like <laughs> India for some reason, maybe I want to go look at some e-commerce, you know, manufacturers yeah, yeah. or something. How long would it traditionally take me to get a travel visa? They're like, oh, you're looking at like 12 weeks. Right. I said, well, how long if I go through you guys? They said, well, we'll have it in two weeks and you don't have to do any of the communication or paperwork or drama. And I was like, wow, how to get my travel visa to India without having to wait 12 weeks and textbook, dealing with 40 man. people in, in, in a government bureaucracy. I'm it's like, textbook. dude, I'm sold. Right. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm sold it, instantly. It, I'm like, it, and, and they were, I mean, they grew that business up to almost a million dollars a month. Now, did they know, because did, it was a, did, were they savvy enough to know what we're talking about here? I mean, we're deliberately structuring a how to without type offer. Were they just already doing it? Did they, or did they, they weren't doing it very cleanly. So we had to help them clarify yeah that attention message piece. And once we had it, it was a rock. And show. clarity is key, right? I mean, the, yeah. the, the, the key word that you just mentioned there is clarity. When you have a how to without formula, it creates such clarity on what it is that you do. There's no, there's no ambiguity. It's so simple what it is that you do, right? It's how to do this without this. Oh, simple, right? How to lose, yep. how to lose 10 pounds in 30 days without you know, skipping dessert. I don't know. Right. It's, it's, it's yeah, just you, such a good about... starting point because it's clean and it's simple. Now it might not be where you begin and end, right? It will be where you begin. There might be other formulas and other hooks that you use. You know, some of the best marketing companies in the world, you know, when you see brands out there that are omnipresent, that are everywhere. We talk about the, you know, that term omnipresent on the show quite a bit. When you see brands that are all over the place, they're everywhere. They're constantly adjusting their hooks. They're constantly adjusting their messaging because they want different entry points. They might attract one group of people with that how-to without message, but they might be able to get in front of a whole different audience with a different style of messaging. That's just one example that you know we're going to talk about here today is the how-to without. Yeah, and 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 not only that, but you know, one and done is not a term in good marketing, yeah, right? Yeah. You, I, it, you, it, you wish you right? put one together. You test it. Even if you get a winner, you know, it, it, then you're you're constantly iterating and creating more and testing against it, yeah. because you want to see if you can beat the control. Yep. And and somebody that we've known for a long time um, in this space, Frank Kern, you know, he made a post the other day that said, uh, when we write our first ad and it's a winner, we call that a freaking miracle, right? Pretty much because it. it it rarely happens once and you always have to be iterating and testing to see if you can beat the control. Yeah, it's like the guy stepping up to the plate in his first major league at bat and he hits a home run. It's like better chance of seeing yeah. lightning strike for that to happen again. Right. And funny, Absolutely. we were just talking about this, right? Like, so today for me, I'm like kind of dragging myself a little bit today. Cause I'm like, I gotta go shoot a whole bunch of videos because I know I can't do one. Cause right now we're gearing up for big video ads on YouTube, a form of media that is, you know, probably the, you know, the biggest and most sought after form of media today. And I'm like, well, the journey begins uh, and it begins with not one or two videos. It, it starts with one or two videos. But I think you said, well, you're probably going to have to shoot like 40 or 50, you know, because you're the traffic guy and I'm the funnel guy. Right. So for yeah. those of you that, that don't know us, when we when we build companies and we work on projects, we sort of tag team it. We're on funnels and sales process and your traffic and media. It's a beautiful one two punch. So I'm like, Man, did you have to tell me 60 videos before the show? I was in a good mood kind of this morning. And then he said, well, you're going to have to get up to 60. And I'm like, well, I was kind of thinking, thinking I could carve out five good ones. And I'm like, not even in the ballpark of that. You, I mean, you're a pro. You might get away yeah, with it's five. It's still not easy though, what, right? It's just. What I did say though, is I said, our, our, our most successful, highest scaling YouTube client gave us 60 videos in the last year. Just to give oh, you context. Over the course of a year, that's fair. Yeah. And it was over the course of a year because you're, you're targeting, you know, you've, you've niched out and you've targeted your audience, but people respond to different tonality, different yeah, hooks, true, different energy, true, true. different backgrounds, different whatever. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, they, they shy away from this part in the beginning. They shy away from really researching their ideal client, researching their ideal pain points, 
researching what keeps them up at night, they shy away from this and they just start throwing stuff at the wall. And, and the problem with that is that, that you waste so much time just iterating over and over and over again when you could have saved yourself the time from just really getting inside of your ideal customer's head and thinking about what they want to accomplish without having to go through this pain, yep. how to do X without having to do X. And, and, and when you take that time in the beginning, it, you're, you're profitable so much faster and you, and you save yourself so much work. Yeah. Listen, I, you know, I, you know, I look at, you know, one of my, you know, I probably have three or four core marketing mentors that have really kind of shaped the way I do things over the last, you know, 10 years, 15 years, probably more like 15 years. One of them is Russell Brunson, founder of ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is probably, I mean, what's the valuation of ClickFunnels right now, Aaron? It's something like, I'd, I'd, say, it's a, I'd say it's a billion, billion dollar value. So I watched that whole, I, I've, I've watched Russell's journey when he was really nothing and became something. We got started around the same time. And I was in his mastermind group years ago. And uh, he's always talking about, even to this day, this is a company that has almost a billion dollar valuation, or at least a, you know, a half a billion dollar valuation, constantly coming to the table with new and different hooks to bring new and different kinds of people into their ecosystem. And I'm like, man, it's like they never run out of gas. They understand the importance of continuing to bring new creative, new ads, new video, and new hooks, new messaging to the table. So they might be running a webinar. They might be running a free plus shipping funnel for their books that they release, you know, probably once a year. They might be running a free report funnel, right? They might be running an offer to, you know, join a, I think one of, one of, one of them that they have is, a, is like a five-day funnel challenge. Like always yeah, something. Yeah, one, one funnel away. Yeah, challenge. always something going on. Like it's never like we just did this one thing. And now we just kind of kick back and optimize it. Yeah, that's part of it. But it's constantly adding new fishing poles to the water. And that's what I see the biggest and the best companies doing. Even, even companies that are small, a couple people, right? You know, a couple operators, but they're doing big numbers. They're doing big numbers because they're really good with the messaging and they're constantly bringing new hooks and new offers to the table. And it's fascinating to watch a company like that, the speed, the momentum, and the innovation. It's not easy to do, but it's kind of a simple formula. Yeah, and and maybe as before we dive into these next parts, you know, for those those listeners that are saying, you know, I just I just I don't know if I'm good at writing copy to get attention, or I don't know where to Which start. Which is the majority. Yeah, maybe you could give them some of your favorite, you know, books that have allowed you to learn, you know copywriting at a high level. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those one of those you know old cliche sayings, you know, success leaves clues, right? There's, or there's no big secrets and you have to look at some of the people who have been writing. I think the best advice I can give on that is look at some of the people that have been writing copy before the internet. That's the big lesson because if you could get people to do, like the internet is like, like we're cheating today. If you can get people to send money from a letter that was sent in the mail or a TV commercial, which, you know, you see big direct response TV ads today. But if you look at the old school copywriters like the Gary Halberts and the Dan Kennedys and you know, guys like that and Robert Collier. And if you go back a little bit, I like to study the new guys, but study the old guys as well and sort of put that together, old versus new. That's the best way to learn because what worked before the internet, in most cases, will kill it on the internet because you have such speed. No question. So it's like, wait a minute, I can look at the, you know, sort of the new players today, that's helpful. But if I go back and, and look into history a little bit and figure out what was some of the wording in psychology that got people to, and let's go back even to the 80s here, Aaron, when we were probably kids, right? Yep. Getting a letter in the mail with a return form, like not even a website, not even a phone number, but put the money, write a check, put the money in the envelope and send it in for the book or the course or the training. That's how the world worked pre-90s, which most people are like, what are they saying? That's how the world worked. So the marketing guys, the copywriting guys in the 60s, 70s and 80s, I'd find one or two of them to study because if they got people to write a check, drop it in an envelope, send it in the mail, lick a stamp, oh my goodness, that wording must be off the charts and certainly it can be transferred today to the internet and should be. And that's the big yeah, lesson. Yeah, and there's, so many, there's so many of those old ads that I go back and I read now and I'm like, man, this is absolutely Gold. brilliant. Yeah. Copy. And, and, you know, the equivalent of kind of what you're talking about just to drive it home is, you know, we see these big you know, skyscrapers today go up overnight and, you know, it's commonplace, right? Do you want, do you, like, you don't want to overlook like the construction that went into building like the great pyramid, right? Cause those guys, 
built one of the most mathematically amazing, you know, wonders of the world, rolling stone on logs good, good, good and, and using rudimentary tools, you know, to, to align everything mathematically perfect and built caverns inside of things that should have crushed them. And like, I want to learn from somebody who pulled off that kind of feat with literally no help. It's right. It, like yeah. I want to learn about the guy that wrote the newspaper ad that sold 200 million of some supplement, some book, some whatever, when they had to write it, send it, wait for three months to get out, you know, to get feedback on it, write it again, write it again. And their whole job was contingent upon you better make this campaign work. You better make your words speak to a human at a core level and get them to take action. Because now, like you said, I can go on the internet and write a piece of copy. I can throw it up. I could, I could do it while we're on the show and write a new ad for you and me and throw it up in, in two minutes while we were still doing this show and then be like, Oh, let's see what happens. Right. But it's, it's lazy. It's, it's almost lazy because it's too easy. Now the, 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 the traffic is so cheap now, you know, back in the day when you were like, look, I'm, I'm $150,000 in for my first infomercial just to get started or I'm $30,000 in for my first ad in a major newspaper, you know, you, you couldn't be wrong. You had to be right, essentially the first time, right? So when you look at some of these old school copywriting experts, like anything that you learn from them will transition into what you're doing beautifully. USA Today used to be 50K for a full page ad back in the day. Mm -hmm. And today, by the way, when you go to the airport next time, USA Today still is a huge selling newspaper at airports. That's probably their biggest place that they sell newspapers, one of their locations. Um, you will still see full, full page ads in the USA Today. I like to, yeah, I, you will see them. Usually you see them in like the financial services space. Could be gold, could be silver, could be trading. That's where I see them though, or weight loss. It's always the big two, right? Finance, finance, weight loss, make money, right? Usually those are yeah, the Yeah, it's areas. health. It's, it's, it's health, and finance, health and finance, right? And like, just to give you context, Forbes hit me up for a full page article about six months ago. Uh, guess what the price was? I, I would have no idea today. 200K. Today for Forbes magazine, full page article? They must yep. still have the readership, obviously, offline, which I'm sure they do. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a big baby right? boomer offline audience. Can you afford to not be perfect if you're dropping a $200,000 on a single page? The beautiful thing about the internet is you could test the ad on Google and spend a few hundred bucks or on Facebook and see what sticks. And then you could transfer. That's what the, that's what the online offline guys would do today is they would test it for a small budget on Google or Facebook and see what kind of, you know, kind of interest they got, what kind of attention they got. Yep. And then they would transfer it into a full page ad. You would you would be crazy to go cold on a full page ad in a magazine without testing it online first. That's the beauty of, of online media is things can be tested at a very low dollar amount before they're scaled. Absolutely. So let's talk about the difference between attention and interest, Andrew. Well, let's do it. So attention, I think we covered, right? How do you get it, right? How do you stand out? It's uniqueness, it's hook, it's showing up a it's little bit. It's pattern interrupt. That's a big pattern interrupt. It's being disruptive. Pattern interrupt is a big, I forget who I was talking to this week. I don't know if it was a client or a member or a potential client or a potential coaching member, but um, somebody was having success throwing up an image that really was unrelated to the offer, but it was enough of a pattern interrupt to get, and this is Facebook, by the way. Facebook is yeah. a, is a, it's a face platform, right? If you can put up a smiling or an awkward face or something that just stands out, it gets attention. And if you can follow that up with the right wording, it's a good one, two punch. And that's, yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam cart right now is running an ad and, and it's clearly killing it. Cause I can see it. And it's a bunch of shredded cardboard. And you're like, what is like that? the first time I, it's the first time I saw it, it stopped me in my tracks. I went, what the hell is that? Right. And then I looked at the ad and then I looked at, and I was like, Oh, it's a Sam cart ad. And I thought, oh, they're just going off a bit off the reservation, you know, today testing something new. But they've been running it now for eight weeks. So, so that image was enough of a pattern disrupt to get attention. And then it made me read the copy. And then the copy's goal is now to, to feed my interest. Yep. And it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the interest And piece, that can happen through image. That can happen through headline. That can happen through the first five seconds of a video, right? Like when we're talking to, to clients with YouTube, we're telling them, look, speak directly to the pain point in the first 10 seconds of YouTube because the great thing about the YouTube platform is that if somebody skips the video, you don't have to pay for it. Huge. Right? So if we were talking about weight loss in your example, right? Coming out and saying, how would you like to lose 10 pounds in the next 
10 days without having to change anything you eat. Don't believe the hype that you're seeing from all the other experts in the world because this is the first time it's ever been done successfully backed by 10,000 case studies. If you're interested, I'm gonna fill you in on how it works below. If not, just go ahead and skip the video, right? We're coming right out. We're speaking to the audience we wanna to talk to. We're grabbing attention and we're trying to pull them down into that interest category. Yep, yep. So let's talk about the interest piece. Obviously, this is where you, you need to utilize things that we've talked about in previous shows, actually last show, episode 19, stories, emotion, testimonials, value. case studies, credibility, value. right? Demonstrating value. There's so many ways to do it. The attention interesting sort of ties together, right? They blend. They blend together. And then it's, you know, getting someone to have enough desire to take the action. So we talked about eight, right? Attention, interest, desire, action. Attention, interest tie together quite a bit. Desire and action is the tricky part. How do you amp up yeah, desire? It, That's the emotional play. Yeah. And like going back to the YouTube example with our frameworks, right? We're grabbing them with a big, bold statement, speaking directly to the audience that we want. We're not messing around, you know, and then we're dragging them into the interest category where now we're saying, you know, my name is X, maybe a little bit of origin story. You know, I discovered this, you know, this special hack, this special feature, this special way of doing things that taking people from pain to pleasure. And, you know, I'm going to be outlining, you know, my five part, you know, method to, you know, achieving the goals and the dreams that you want, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and then all of a sudden it's, it's call to action, right? So we've grabbed their attention. We're feeding them with some value to, 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 to stoke their interest level, right? We're basically saying, you know, is this what you want to have happen in your life? Is this what you've been looking for forever, but you've been, you know, hitting brick walls everywhere you go, future pacing a little you know, bit. tapping into their desire, you know, t future pacing them, you know, what would your life look like and life look like in a month? If all of a sudden you could show up in your favorite red dress and it fit like it did when you were 19, you know, stoking that desire, future pacing them and saying, okay, so to, 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 you know, learn more about my five step method click the link below and now we're, we're getting them to take that action. Yeah. So the right? desire that piece there is trying to create some feeling, right? Yeah, you know. it is. It's tapping into that emotional level with the client. It might be something like in the weight loss example, what would it feel like if 90 days from now you were 10 pounds lighter, you needed a whole new wardrobe and your husband or wife just thought you were stunning. Right. I mean, it's just something like that, that very few use that kind of language and that kind of persuasion and they don't really elicit that kind of desire in their ads. And it's it's not easy to do. It, there, there's a level of awareness that you'll need to have when you're crafting your message. Again, it doesn't matter if this is a, a page for someone to book a discovery call or a demo with you. It doesn't matter if it's a page for somebody to sign in and download your free report. At every stage of the game, we need to keep, we need to get the attention, keep the attention and create enough desire for somebody to ultimately go to the next step with you. That's how you ultimately sell more with less resistance is you keep interest and you keep desire up all the way through the process until they get to you. So the, by the time they get to you, the ultimate goal here would be they're excited to talk to you. They almost come pre-sold, which is absolutely the game changer right here, is when somebody gets to you and they're like, wow, I've really been excited for our call, for the demo, for the conversation, for the webinar, because you, it, it just got me so excited, right? People are yeah, going to show and, up and, when and they're and interested and excited. They're not going to really show up if they're not interested and excited. So how do you create interest and excitement? No, when you keep repeating that framework, you know, from your ad, like for example, from your ad to your landing page to an example to your webinar, when you keep running that same framework, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, I don't want to be too repetitive in my messaging. But the reality is, is that you're giving a little bit more and a little bit more at each step. So the person's desire is actually not staying level, right? The more they consume, and the more they see themselves in the product and the more actions they take, right, the higher the desire level goes up. So even though it's the same framework, it's almost like stair stepping somebody's desire up into more and more and more, almost to the point where they're like, just give me the thing. Like I'm salivating to get the thing now, right? And you, and you look at that flow and you compare it to what so many people and so many companies do where it's like, I've got a thing, now go consume information at your leisure on my giant corporate site with you know 52 different places to go. They lost it. Yep, they lost the track. They, they did not build up this pent up desire to take the action that you ultimately want, right? Which is why you carry that same framework all the way through and you can carry the same framework all the way through your email follow-ups, through your SMS, 
even through your, you know, your first, you know, strategy session that you're doing with somebody, same framework, building, 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 staircasing somebody's desire to take action. And again, we've talked about this quite a bit as well. It's, it's how are you helping somebody either avoid pain or gain pleasure? And usually the avoiding pain piece, we've mentioned this many times, is the biggest driver of all. And oftentimes what you do, what you sell, what service you offer is a way for somebody to avoid pain, do things better, yeah, you look do at things Ibiza. quicker. Look at Ibiza as the example. Yeah. You know, when, when they came to me and said, we, we sell travel visas, I was like, oh, I don't like, what am I going to do with that? You know? And then when I said to them, well, what, like, what makes you special? And they said, oh, we help you avoid 27 pieces of paperwork and three months going back and forth with some nincompoop working in a government agency. I was like, oh, th- we're going to sell the hell out of mm-hmm. this because that is a painful experience that nobody wants to go through ever, right? Nobody wants to invest that amount of time in that nonsense, right? So it was an easy business to build up into an eight-figure range. Right. And in that example right there, most novice business owners would be talking about all of the things we do for you, which is good. But not all of the pain you get to avoid yes, by working with all, us. And that's where I'm going with it is, yes, the features, but then the benefits. So another big principle here, salesmanship and print, copywriting, persuasion, features and benefits, not just features. So here's all the things we do for you. Here's all the ways that benefits you, right? Saving you hours, not having to allocate a whole day, right? All the things that make you get excited, right? Make you desire the service is not just what they are but how they impact you right now to avoid that pain or gain that pleasure. That's the conversation you want to have with yourself when you're doing your marketing is, am I nailing the features and the benefits, not just the features? Very few nail them both. Very few say, here's what it is and here's how it benefits you. Here's what it, right. here's what it like, does uh, and here's how it can help you. Very few play that tennis match. Yeah, I look at somebody, like, I think it's Carvana is the brand right now. I could be wrong. Maybe you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But... My wife is in absolute love with this company right now, has never bought anything from them, wants to buy from them just to support what they're doing. What is it called again? And Carvana? I think it's called Carvana. What's the product? Uh, and basically what they've done is they've said, you can skip all the nonsense about buying a new car. You, can, you don't have to bring oh, your I car in. Yeah. You don't have to get it appraised. You don't have to sit in a finance office with a sales guy at a you know, for seven hours at the car lot. You don't have to do all the insurance paperwork. You don't have to go through all the beating over the head of the upsells and everything else. You can literally go to our site, put in your information about your car. We'll give you a quote on the trade in value. You can apply it to the car that you want. We will ship you the car. The car will show up at your house. It will show up insured. We will take your car away from you on the flatbed. We will do it with a smile. And literally the whole process is going to take you 25 minutes instead of seven hours in a traditional car dealership where you're feeling like you're being preyed on, you know, this is what we do. And she's like, I would never buy a new car again. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I would buy, I would, I would buy it from them only because she loathes the experience in a car dealership at such a core level. And they spoke right to it. They said, Hey, look, we solved every single pain point you have. Go online, buy the car, get a trade in. Should drop it at your house, pre-insured. We'll give you the keys. We'll smile. We'll say thank you very much. So they made, they, they created an over-the-top offer, right? Yeah. They, 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 they Irresistible offer. Tons of desire to avoid the pain, right? I'll give you another perfect example. I booked a vacation yesterday for my family for five days during you know, spring break is coming up with the kids. So we're going to go up to the mountains of North Carolina for four days, right? Lovely. So now most people are going on Expedia, Hotels.com. They're going to American Airlines. They're searching flights. I'm like, I'm going to the American Express Platinum travel agent that is attached to my American Express Platinum card. I'm making, so I'm telling my wife this, I'm making one phone call. I'm going to hang on the phone for about an hour with this nice lady. And while I'm on the phone with her doing all that legwork, I'm probably going to be maybe catching up on some emails. Uh, I might be having lunch, which I was. I'm, I'm going to chill through the process. And that's exactly what I did. And in one hour's time on the phone, the entire trip was booked. The hotels were handled at a signature property, the flights were booked, all the kids, both kids, up four people. And I'm like, that was one hour focused. And I don't know what it is, 40 bucks they charge you at American Express Platinum Travel to do all that legwork, all that access they have to all the flights and all the hotels and all the discounts and all the, the benefits right there at their fingertips. Why would I take three, four, five hours and do that on my own to try to save a buck? Right. So it's the same kind of thing. Like if that's my, you love the experience, you love the experience that you were given. Yeah. Right. And that, and that could be your USP 
is the experience that you get. Everybody sells the same thing. Expedia sells the same thing. And hotels.com sells the same thing. Everybody sells the same thing. Maybe you don't have the time. Maybe you don't like the process. Maybe you just like feeling good and, and enjoyed the process. There's just so many different ways that you can create interest with your clients. I, I think the single basic, biggest example for me, Andrew, was the, the first time I chartered a, a private jet, right? I think I told you about this. And, you know, I was late for a meeting in New York. My plane got canceled. It was a big, like, eight, you know, eight-figure opportunity. And I had to be there and couldn't be messing around. So I chartered a jet, went cross-country on this jet. And I drove into the, the, the private airport. And I walked in the door. And they said, uh, Mr. Parkinson, thank you for coming. Uh, hand us your passport. And I handed them my passport. And they said, we'll take care of everything. They left. There was no security. Yeah, you don't even no go through the – you don't even go through the main – no, yeah. separate, totally separate building. Like parking your car. No, no metal detectors. Yep. No, no signing in. No anything. They handled all of the the customs, the paperwork, everything on their own. They came back to me twenty minutes later while I was having an espresso. They said uh, everything is taken care of for you, sir. Um, when would you like to leave? <laughs> it's like you're getting said, on a bus, I, right? Or, yeah. Yeah. When, awesome. when would I like to leave? I get to determine. You know. When we go, yeah, well, it's, sir, it's your plane. You can tell us when you would like to go. I was like, well, I think I'd like to go now. Okay, sir, we'll walk, let's walk out onto the tarmac. We walked on the tarmac. I got in. There was none of this sit down, you know, safety demonstration, get off your phone, you know, you know, put, put your seat up. They, they said, you can do whatever you want, right? I was talking on my phone, standing up in the middle of the plane, blasting ACDC, taking off of the tarmac, you know, and, and they, they were like, this is, this is all yours. You would do whatever you want, right? When I got to experience that level of, of enjoyment from that experience, it completely tainted every, everything about flying commercial forever. And I don't fly private a lot, you know, because it's expensive. But you provide that level of experience for one of your clients it's very hard for them to go back to whatever one of your competitors were doing, which is the Amex example that you're talking about. Yeah, and I think it's a good point you make. The word experience is key, right? What kind of an experience are you creating in your process, right? You got the attention. You got them to take the action, hopefully, make the phone call, sign into the website, become a lead. Now what kind of an experience are you creating for them in your universe? And that's probably a whole different episode, but that's the customer development piece and the experience piece that people don't forget. Right? They don't forget the experience piece. They'll forget a lot of the little nitty gritty things, but the experience, the, the connection they had with somebody. I love it when, when, when we get emails from, from members and customers saying, wow, I mean, your customer service team is amazing. You guys have all this support in videos and live chat and live trainings. And there's so many ways that you, know, you guys help us and take care of us and care about us within the Pipeline Pro universe. When people come in, we get those all day, every day. And it's, 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 that's what they remember. They'll remember the experience way more than the product and service, right? And that's what yeah, you want to elicit absolutely. for sure. And if, you, and if you're in a commoditized business, right, this may be your differentiator. Yeah, it has to be. Right? And you may be able to speak to your audience, right? And, and, and I'll use the, the, the Amex example, you know, that you had, right? Are you sick and tired of searching for prices on airline websites and finding out that you can't put your kids and you all together in one, you know, one row because they book you in all these different seats and they tell you, you got to show up and then they got to, then you got to move people all around. And then, and then, you know, you've got the, the, you know, the only choices of things to eat are, you know, potato chips and crackers and, you know, having to do multiple connections on flights and getting delayed and not having a hotel and uh, forget about all those things moving forward. Welcome to the Amex travel, you know, program. Well, we're going to handle every single those one for you. We're going to make sure everything is top notch. We're going to book you the finest hotels. We're going to have backups if things go wrong. We're going to send a car on your behalf to pick you up so you don't have to worry about, you know, paying those nasty extra fees for leaving your car at the airport and blah, 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 blah. And it's going to cost you a grand total of X dollars. I'm done. I'm out. They just spoke to all my pain points. Yep. Right. And, and at this point, I don't even care how much it is. Right. That, I'm going. That's what I'm using. Yeah, it's a beautiful right? thing. And everybody has this in their business, in their product Absolutely. and service. They have this either ultra convenience thing or this unbelievable experience. Like, like this, you, everybody has, I hope you have this uniqueness in your product or, 
or, or you need to find it, right? This is your you unique selling it. proposition, right? Coming back full circle here. You get attention and you keep attention by being very unique. And if you don't think you're unique, you need to find the element that is unique because there's no doubt that there is some sort of unique selling proposition in what it is that you sell. And you need to search high and low to find that if you can't find it because it's there. And if it isn't there, then you, know, you might want to look at a different product or a different service to market because you need that to, to stay in the game today because it's so hard to get attention. Absolutely. And, and, and obviously, if you can do a good job of understanding your customer, understanding their pain points, doing your research, testing some ways to gather their attention, right? Building some rapport with them, sharing your story, you know, talking about your aha moments, all that stuff, building up that interest, future pacing what their experience could look like if they worked with you versus somebody else and starting to future pace what, how much, how much more fun that's going to be in their life and creating that desire, then the action, the outcome becomes relatively simple. But when you jump to the front and just jam the action in their face, we're a great travel agency book with us here. It's like, what's most websites, by the way. It's like, man, right? wow, like, that it, was like, where did that come from? It's like, I'm, I have no context. Why? I'm not even, I, I'm not I? even interested yet. Right. I haven't even, there's no, like, what's the benefit? It's just this Nothing. random stuff. People throw up and they're like, oh, Facebook doesn't work for me. Instagram doesn't work for me. I can't do YouTube ads. Well, you haven't followed the framework. And, and the takeaway coming full circle here as we end is it's this framework. It's attention, interest, desire, and action. If you do nothing else, write those four words down. It's called ADA, attention, interest, desire, and action, and build your frameworks at each step. What is the attention I'm getting? How am I keeping interest? How am I eliciting desire? And what is the action I want someone to take? Have I bridged those four pillars? And when you do, you really can't fail unless you just don't put that in front of anybody because very few do that. That's the formula. That'll put you 90% ahead 99. of your competition, 99, buddy. right? Yeah. I mean, if you can keep testing after that to try and, you know, beat the control and improve the results and you should, but just starting with that, We'll put you, you, I say 90%, you say 99%. I don't know where the actual number is, but it's, it's just following that framework will put you exponentially further ahead than, than the majority of your competitors. Yep, it would. And I tell you as a listener watching or listening that that's the beginning of your study, right? Or that's the beginning of the knowledge you want to gain on how to make this work. Go a little deeper on this. Understand persuasion. Understand the psychology of what gets people to move. Take the time to do the copywriting study. I remember when I was you know, coming up in the, in the, in the information marketing, internet marketing world a decade and a half ago, probably around the time we met every single week, I would allocate, Aaron, you know, this, I would allocate at least an hour or two, not a lot of time, by the way, an hour or two to studying copywriting, salesmanship and print the title of the show today. I would spend about, I was mainly studying Dan Kennedy's stuff because he had, he had, this, he great. had this membership, by the way, which was really cool, which was called look over my shoulder. And it was a monthly newsletter. And he would include in that newsletter, it's a hundred dollar a month newsletter, a tiny little package would come to me every month. And it would be one to two examples of current copywriting clients he was writing copy for, and he was sharing how he was doing it. So here's the video sales order they wanted me to do. Here's what I changed. Here's what I added. I, re I wrote it from scratch. Here's the formula. Here's how I did this here. And you would see how a multiple six figure copywriter, that's, you know, he's multiple six figures just to be retained. Right. He's like he's like in the in the not anymore, but in the direct response marketing world, like hiring the number one criminal defense attorney on the planet Earth. I don't know who it is today, but it was like back in the day, it was, you know, the guys who defended OJ. Right. And, they, and there's a couple of them still circulating around. Like if you get in big trouble, there's one guy or two guys you're going to go to. And you're pretty much going to spend every dime you have on these guys. That's how Dan was for a couple decades in the in the, in the Internet, in the um, in the copywriting space. So I would study that stuff every single week and eventually it starts to become second nature because as you read and study copywriting and you see examples and you read sales letters and you look at webinar formulas and you go down this path and you do this research, you start writing and communicating in print like this. You start to be able to communicate in video like this. You start to be able to put the right words on an ad, the right words on a script that gets people to take action. So it is a, it is, you know, the good news is it's, it's simple to learn. The bad news is it's going to take some time and it's going to take some study. It isn't something that you just do once. 
and show up for and read a book and you're like, oh, wow, I'm doing this all right. I'm killing it with my ads. This is a, it's one a, this of the a most valuable game. skills in the world, though. It is. And, and like we said in the beginning, it is the one that gets people stuck more than any other is when it comes time to get to the next step in a sales process. The 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 number one sticking point will always be the wording and the messaging, people not knowing what to write. What do I say here? What do I do here? Is this strong enough? And that that's why this skill is so important, because it gives you speed and leverage. Understanding copywriting gives you speed and leverage. Yeah, we've given people some great books today. Robert Cialdini has some amazing books as well, you know, that, that people can go through. I mean, it, it only takes a quick Google search to see who, you know, the greatest copywriters in the world are. And you just start with one and follow their frameworks. I mean, I, I had an old framework from Frank Kern, who's, who's not a throwback. He's a, you know, he's more of a current type of person. But he's and, been writing copy for a couple of decades. So he's yeah, kind of he's, been a little pre-internet, post-internet, right? Yeah, he was he was kind of like the first copywriter that really like became prominent yeah. when when things transitioned to the exactly. internet. And I and I remember just buying one of his frameworks, you know, for a a written sales letter, you know, with my weight loss company and I wrote one, and then I took his framework and I rewrote it again to see which one would win and his won, right? And now that became the, the de facto framework that I used moving forward, right? So find just one person, study their, their, their strategy, study their, their flow and start to test the frameworks, you know, the AID, AIDA framework, the, the different layers of, of persuasion and complexity that some of these other copywriting experts have and, and have some fun with it because man, you write one great ad, one great website, one great piece of copy. I mean, we're, we're running almost the same, you know, ad, for Pipeline Pro that I wrote nine months ago. I mean, how much money is that <laughs> that ad made? And again, when you know when you when you know what we know, stuff has legs. Like you said, that ad, 10, 11 months running, over a million dollars in revenue from a couple ads that were written a year ago. I mean, talk about turnkey, talk about leverage, talk about 24-7 money. I mean, that's why you're in the game. But you got to have yeah. the skills to stay in the game. You got to do the little things that most people will never do to stay in the game. And that's really this piece right here. The salesmanship and print piece is the writing piece. It's the wording. It's the messaging. And when you can really get a handle on that and you can get a groove around that, boy, things start to move quickly. They really do. Absolutely. Let's wrap it Let's up. Let's wrap it up, man. So uh, any, 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 final, any final pieces of advice before we roll here and, and leave this salesmanship and print conversation into the episode 20 archive? I, I say it all the time. Um, perfection is the enemy of success. Find a framework, put it down on a Google Doc, put it down on a piece of paper, whatever you feel comfortable with, and test it and let the math define your success. Yeah, and last thing I would say is there's really no reason to reinvent any wheels. It's all out there. There's a lot of really great case studies. There's plenty of gurus in this space who have written great copy and they've written great ads and they've done great webinars and they've written great free reports over the years. There is no reason to, for, for, for you to look at a blank white slate of a Word doc or a Google doc and go, where do I begin? There's a, there's a beginning spot always available to you. You just have to go out there and do the research and find what's working and who's been making it work the longest. The longevity thing's a biggie as well, right? When you start seeing ads and offers on TV, by the way, or on the internet for months and months and months and months. Guess what that tells you? They're not spending money every month because it's not working. They're spending money every month because it is working. So that's another thing you want to look at. It's all there. Just start to notice it more. And when you do, you can start putting a lot of these principles to work um, to kick some major ass in your sales process. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. Kick some major ass in your sales process. We'll see you in episode 21. That's Aaron. I'm Andrew. This one's a wrap. We'll see you soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.